When it comes to Inkscape, you might not even be aware, but there are a lot of different features that you can use, which are really fun. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to use one of them, the Stitch Subpaths. Hello my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another video and today I'm going to be showing you one of the path effects called Stitch Subpaths. So without further ado, let's get started. Now when you begin, the best thing to do is to set up your document of course. And today I'm going to use a black canvas because it just makes it a whole lot easier to see what I am doing. Now you can do this by coming up to File and then selecting document properties or you can simply press this little page with a wrench icon right here this will bring up your properties menu once it's open if you want to change the color of your canvas select this box here where it says page select that and this little box will appear you can now select the color of your canvas and click out of it when you're done back out of that one too now the stitch subpaths is under the path effects menu but before we get there we need to set up what we want to stitch so i'm going to give you a quick overview of what the tool does and then i'm going to give you an example of how you could use it so to begin with i'm just going to come to my pen tool and i'm going to create two separate lines going vertically so starting from the top i'm going to hold control and that way i can make sure it's going completely vertical now that i have my second point i'm just going to right click to finish it right there i'm also going to change the color of this from black because otherwise we will not be able to see it so i'm going to come down to the white color swatch at the bottom here and i'm going to hold shift and select it now we have a white stroke and as you can see it is perfectly visible now i'm going to select it and then i'm going to control d to duplicate and then while holding control i'm just going to slide it off to the side now holding shift i'm going to select them both i'm going to go to path combine this has combined both of them into one object now we need to open our path effects menu to do that you can come to path and select path effects and it will open up this menu on the right hand side with nothing in it if you select the arrow at the right hand side you will get a list of all your different path effects now for this one we are going to be going to the generate section and we're going to be selecting stitch subpaths when you do, you will get something that looks like this. Now at the moment, we only have five paths and we're going to be increasing that. On a basic level, what this will do is it will use both of the strokes that you created with the pen on the left and the right hand side. And then it will stitch a lot of paths in between. So as you can see, these lines are like the rung of a ladder and we only have five so there'll be one two three four five now when we increase that to say 100 as you can see we now have 100 lines from the top to the bottom now here's where it becomes interesting and a lot more fun the option we are going to be using is this one right here edit on canvas now as soon as you select that button you will see two little nodes appear in the top left corner of your canvas right here if i zoom in you'll be able to see them better they are very very close together now if you want to move where these nodes are so they're easier to get to just highlight them both by selecting a box around them and then you can move them to wherever you want now the reason these nodes are here is because these are going to be how you control all of this. 
and as you can see as I pull this away it will warp the lines but there's a lot more that you can do by selecting anywhere in the center of the line you can then click and drag to bend the lines in any way you see fit and you can even use these handles here to get a much more wavy effect as well and just like when you're using the pen tool if you come to any point on this green line and double click you can create a new node that will allow you to do things like this so that is basically what i mean this is how to use the stitch subpass but there is a lot more that you can do with it now also while you're using this you can go to your edit paths by nodes tool and you will see the same nodes that you created to begin with the top of the stroke that you started on the left hand side and the bottom and the same on the right hand side these can still be manipulated with your node tool so as you can see you can move them around and you can play with them to get some really cool effects by manipulating these in any way that you want you can actually create some really cool designs and then you can still go back to this line over here using this button and manipulate it even further and now as you can see we have a really cool effect but there is a lot more that you can do with this tool so let's take a circle for example let's go to our ellipses tool on the left hand toolbar right here i'm going to create a small little circle in the middle i'm going to go to path object to path or you can simply control shift and c and then i'm going to right click and duplicate or you can control and d to duplicate with that duplicated i am going to use my select tool to increase the size of an outer ring just like that now i'm going to hold shift select them both go to path and like we discussed earlier i'm going to combine now i am able to use the stitch subpass and as you can see we have five paths now you might be wondering why you could only see four well technically there is two right at the top because this is the start point and the end point as it comes around in a circle two of them are hidden at the top but if we increase this to say 150 you will see the effect that it can have now again we can use the stitch subpath button here and this will bring up our two little nodes in the top left corner let's move them so they're more easily visible and now i'm just going to click and drag and if we just drag up we can get that sort of warping effect here if we click this down we can get the center to overlap like this now with it overlapping around there i'm going to start bending this line and all of a sudden as you can see we're getting some very cool effects and there you go now like i said earlier there is a very simple way that you can make some interesting designs just by using the pen tool and creating two different strokes and then connecting them with the stitch subpaths so let's say i just made the bottom of a box i'm just holding control to make sure that i can snap it onto the vertical and horizontal axes and now we have that there i'm going to change the color to white by holding shift and selecting the white color swatch and now i'm going to create 
exactly the same but smaller and put it up here in the top. So for that I can just control D and then use my select tool, scale it down and then hold control while I move it up just like that. Now I'm going to hold shift, select them both, go to pass, combine and we have our shapes. If I just click off it, now you can see the kind of design that I've got going. And now I'm going to go back to my path effects. I'm going to stitch sub paths. And as you can see, we have now got a square going around in a semicircle here. Now, of course, it's not actually a semicircle because it is just the bottom half of a square. That's what it looks like. But as I put up the number of paths, so let's say 200 this time. Oh, I did. 20 <laughs> there you go as you can see that gives a really cool effect like you're walking down a cybertronic hallway or something like that but of course you can use your edit nodes tool and you can create some really cool designs just by moving these nodes to where you want them to go you can make it seem a lot more warped something like that and then i'm going to go to my edit on canvas and now as you can see it gives a really cool effect and you can be playing around with this for a long time i have done that many many times I've just been playing around with it and seeing what works and what doesn't. And then I have just carried on playing and playing to see if there's anything else that I can do with it. Because it's just so much fun to get some really interesting designs. And it is very easy to do. Now there is one more thing that I wanted to show you. I've just got the same shape and slightly rotated it and changed the colour. You can change the colour simply the same way that you would normally change any other colour. And you can use the fill and stroke menu which can be found right here. To open up this menu and then in the stroke tab you can still edit it in exactly the same way that you would any other stroke. So first you need to make sure that you finalize this at the moment it is still its stitch subpaths so you finalize it by going to pass object to pass and then you can use the stroke paint tab to put a gradient on it for example so you get something that looks a little bit more like this or you can have it fading towards the middle or you can put a linear gradient on it if you so wish as well. So you can have it fading out into the background and have it as a very nice gradient for one of your images. But you can also add a glow to it as well. If you take this object and you duplicate it, you can then turn the stroke white and add a little bit of a blur around three maybe a little bit less than that i don't want it to be too much and now if i drop that piece down to the bottom just add a little bit more onto it and then we can select the top one drop the opacity slightly that's a bit too much and there you go, you've got a really nice glow to it. In fact, the possibilities are endless. But there you go, my friends. That is how you use the Stitch Subpaths Path Effect. There are now multiple ways that you can help to support this channel and me to provide better content for you. Introducing my new merch store. You can get some Button Press Graphics merch just by following the link in the description. Did you know that you can become a member of the Button Press Graphics YouTube channel? Well, now you do. 
you will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel enabling me to make much better content in the future. Also, you can send in your artwork into the creative corner. This is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time.